Hi, happy Monday and welcome to the Universe Within. My name's Amanda and I'm going to be doing a timeless reading in my series, Messages from Spirit. And there is always an energy session attached, not attached, but goes along with this reading that I link in the description. And if you don't see it there, that means that I haven't uploaded it yet. So there is no link for it yet. Um, so I've already pulled the spread. Um, I also do energy work, offer private readings, and I have several classes, and I make uh, organic skin and pet care products. If you're interested in that, you can check out my information below. So um, before I get started reading, <laughs> I just want to say this last week was super intense. If you watched the reading last week, we got two hermit cards, and why? I, I, yeah, they said we would be going within, but I didn't think it was going to be like that. I had to take two days off um, for integration because I it was just super intense. At one point, I felt like I was going to pop out of my body while I was driving, which that, that was kind of scary. Normally, I can handle that sensation, but, you know, I was driving my friend's kid home from school, so that that wasn't a good time. Um, also, something different, They we used three decks and a lot of cards out of the fairy tarot. Um, and the fairy oracle wisdom. So the fairies have a lot to say to us, intensive shifts. And I just would like to say on a personal note, my mom told me that she and my aunt listen to my tarot readings and watch my light language. And I just wanna say hi and thank you. And uh, I'm super grateful for your support. So let's, let's see what we say. What we gotta say, page of swords. Ooh yeah, new beginnings. Um, why is my brain going blank on this? I actually was trying to tap into what the energy was doing yesterday and they gave me this card. And it's like my brain just went blank on, on it. And why am I looking in wands? Swords, page of swords. I know it's like, oh, it's taking a break. That's what it is. We get a little bit of a break. Um, peaceful interlude. Yes. And also communication, patience and prudence. But I feel like this is more of a, um, a break. We're going to get a little bit of a break after, after the intensity of last week. Two of swords. Ooh. We can't see something. Something... Two of Swords, Fairy's Blind, she's got, you know what, My, I made a post yesterday about the energy and twos were all over that thing and I was talking about balancing feminine and masculine, light and shadow, and this goes, that kind of goes along with that message. Then we got the world. I, I, I believe that we're undergoing like a timeline shift literally right now. Um, the Schumann report the Schumann resonant measures the earth's uh, frequency uh, and the, sh the earth's resonance and this morning it was almost a solid white out for about seven hours so and then I got I saw a 555 license plate yesterday and today I ran to Whole Foods to get some pancake stuff and as I was walking to my car um, another car whipped into the parking lot into the stall next to my car with a 555 plate. So I think this is the, um, because we did this activation, remember last week I was saying because we did this activation through us, we're birthing a new timeline. And I think that's what they're talking about. Maybe this peaceful interlude is kind of like that void that we're in before it comes together. And it's the balancing of the world. And then we've got the two of wands. Although this fairy looks kind of sad. She looks real sad, looking down at her stuff. There's mushrooms down here, but there's also a little, there's two suns in this, the background. What else, what are y'all saying? Then we got the chariot and the six of wands. Remember we pulled the chariot at the end of the reading last week? So it's arriving. And then we got the six of wands, which is an alliance of, if sixes represents uh, stability and like uh, stable cycles. And this is about like friendship, teamwork. But I wanna look at the two of wands. There's also a lion huh, in the back. And I was actually singing, 
I was actually singing two different songs as I was setting my camera and everything up. I was singing It's Only by um, Odessa, which is um, we're only, it's only slaughter, we're only lions, it's only blood. And I can't help but think of, of that lion when I say that. The other one was what the, uh, the Wicked Witch of the East, or Wicked Witch of the West, the green one. Why the hell can't I remember that? The Wicked Witch of the West. What her um, army sings, the oh, we, oh, we, oh. <laughs> Why did I start singing that? I don't know, but I knew it meant something. So maybe it's about, hmm, let me see, let me see. I gotta look here. Okay. Yeah. Changes. Sadness. Regret. So let me put this together. We're gonna take a little bit of a break. Maybe it's that we're coming. Oh, because we went through this. Okay, yeah. So we get a little bit of a break. We get a little bit of a peaceful interlude. There might be some challenge because swords, 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 swashbuckler, what the hell? I'm blaming Mercury. We're in Mercury retrograde already. Um, so I'm blaming Mercury for my speech. Um, but yeah, lots of swords energy and wands. So we got fire and air. So we're getting this break. We're balancing. We might not be able to see something's coming. We're, we're shifting. I believe, yeah, like I said, we're shifting timelines. And maybe it's that we've, that we've had to let go of people or things, just a lot of release. And we might have felt sad or disappointed, but through alchemizing that, we brought in the chariot, and now we've got this, this time of like teamwork and stability. Okay, that's where we go. <gasps> and then we got the Eight of Cups. And the High Priestess, what? Okay, so we've got four major arcanas in this um, spread out of the fairy tarot. We've got Eight of Cups, which some of the cups are spilled over, some of them are upright, some of them have magic in them, but the magic, it's like coming from our crown and she's got her hand in the cup with that same like um, design of like the magical looking thing and there's also one above her head. So it's like we're going to be bringing in, I don't know if you can really see that, but uh, we're going to be, we got stability, our cup's full, eights are about, you know, it's the same, eights are the same shape as the infinity symbol, and um, eights symbolize harmony and abundance. So yeah, we've got, our cups are full, we made it through that shift, which was so intense, and now the chariots arrived for a period of abundance and love and teamwork and uh, coming together and we've got the high priestess which is super nurturing and she's holding a scroll which I'm interpreting as a soul contract so we've closed out that other cycle where we've begun this new one and we've got a new fresh new soul contracts to come with a new cycle of abundance and stability and emotional fulfillment and teamwork oh yeah I'm feeling it <gasps> and then we got the two of cups oh and then the Ace of uh, Voices, which is the Ace of Swords, which is about new beginnings. And then this one goes this way. It's the Muse of Emotions, which is like the King of Cups <gasps> and Death. Oh, whoa, what? Okay. So the Two of Cups, emotional stability, balance of the emotions. And this is like also, this is not just self-love, but it could be romantic love and partnership. And then, so for this week, we've got new soul contracts coming in with, with our soul tribe. Maybe some of them are new. Communicate, maybe, ooh, ace of, of swords or voices is, um, Katniss, dude, why do you wait till I'm doing this reading before you start raking the shit out of your bed? She does it so much that they're like, they're bald and the little cushions that inside of it have been all torn up and I've got to get them new beds because she's just destroyed them. She's sweet, but she's, a, she's kind of a damn mess. Um, anyway, so I also see it as we're going to be getting some third eye activations. Anyway, there's new, there's going to be communication coming in or you're going to be meeting somebody new, new soul tribe, new experiences. 
um, but it's balanced. It'll be balanced. It could be friendship. It could be romantic. It could be whatever. It could be somebody from your past returning. It is Mercury retrograde. So if your ex be texting you right now, don't trust it. <laughs> now I use your intuition, but you're going to be hearing, you'll be hearing from like friends and, and people that haven't quite, or that you have to resolve some, some of the themes that were going on during the previous retrograde. So kind of look back at what you were doing in, in May and uh, the beginning of June, because that's about, that's when the last one happened. So emotional stability, self-love, balance, we'll be getting, we'll be able to see clarity. We're getting new beginning with partnerships of some kind, new soul contracts starting. And then, but we've, it's gonna be, if you can see here, the muse of emotions it's this mirror you're they're balanced they're mirrored there's a lot of uh, balancing and mirroring that i'm seeing here so they're just going to be a reflection of yourself but because you're in this new stable position you're going to be attracting um something stable but there's also the death card i think this might be like we might have another a, a death to ourselves or like I feel like we just did this, but maybe they're t telling us we're going to get a little bit of a break and things are going to be going really well. And maybe, maybe the dynamic, the dynamic that was previously held is dead. And you've got this whole new beautiful cycle that's going to be beginning. And the five of inspiration, which is like the five of wands is about, I see this is like self-reflection and again, this was like with the mirroring, right? So it's like self-reflection. They may be coming in to help you kill a dynamic. Like if you've healed this on the energetic plane, which I had some crazy meditations last week and I've, I had a dream last night that kind of went along with the meditations of, what, of things and dynamics that I've, he I've healed. And um, I feel like self-healing, self-reflection, and this is now going to be mirrored in your friendships and your partnerships, even business. It's just, it, we've got new soul contracts, but this death card, I want to, I want to find more about this death card because I want to know what this means. I want to know, can you guys tell me more about what you mean by this death card? It's out of the feather messenger. No, uh, I'm not gonna take it because I'm not sure. Make it real, make it, make it real positive or not positive about. I can't talk, guys. Jeez, not. I wanted to say make it clear. <laughs> we got the eagle. You are learning all aspects of spiritual connection and searching new heights. So death isn't really about death. Death, death is the same. I see the death card a lot of times as beginnings because beginnings and beginnings and endings are the same things. If you if you were alive in the 90s and you heard that song closing time every new beginning is some other beginnings end that's kind of what i i was kind of feeling I, I didn't feel like it was like another death process because we've already done that so yeah we've got this beginning but actually look here it's like mo a moth moths are about death and rebirth and new beginnings okay so yeah a new beginning and we're learning more about our spiritual connection and how powerful we are and reaching new heights so this is a whole new level which I mean personally I was tapping into that for myself and even clients and other people I connect with on social media in the spiritual community um, have been feeling this and experiencing this too and like remember what they said last week after we had to go through that hermit phase and remove some blockages we had the chariot coming and the chariots bringing this new contracted cycle of abundance stability new relationships new beginnings balance a new layer of our spirituality full of self-reflection and confidence and you know overcoming and one thing that i always notice about this car it's hilarious i think she's got a mirror here in like the root sacral area but it's got like these little you can't really see it because it's too detailed but it's got like this light burst around it and i always think like yoni power use your you that maybe they're saying like even like um 
like a sacred sexual awakening even and like learning how to use your um, sexual energy for manifestation um, I have a video out on that on my uh, YouTube channel you have to go to my playlist I think it's called uh, the consciousness expansion is the name of the playlist this is my YouTube channel what the hell is wrong with my brain I swear I'm not high I don't got I, I don't have any marijuana in my house or in my possession I, I promise I, I'm completely with it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I am noticing this here. It's like, it's an awakening, awakening of creativity and maybe, yeah, awakening to your sexual creativity and how to use sexual energy for manifestation. It's super powerful. So they gave me a whole bunch of these fairy oracle wisdom and I was like, really y'all, really? So we got the chocolate brownie fairy, which actually looks a lot like the moth in the death card. And this card is, is it literally, it does say to eat more chocolate in it. Um, so chocolate has tons of antioxidants and um, um, minerals and vitamins. If you get high grade dark chocolate or even cacao, which I've been meaning to buy cacao. And I said, I'm buying some more ceremonial grade cacao this week because I haven't had any a few months. And that really hope, helps open the heart chakra. But what else, what else does the chocolate brownie fairy say? There's a key word associated with it and I can't, I can't bring it forward. Mm. Enjoy the sweetness of life. Yeah, all right. So yeah, besides eating chocolate and things like that, which also help open the heart chakra, it's just about enjoying. This is a period of just enjoyment. I think we went through like the biggest death and rebirth that we've had ever. <laughs> like we've had some pretty painful stuff, but there's that. Hmm. So we have a period of enjoyment coming up and then we have the flirt. This is like flirting with your desires and i mean i'm even tapping into that with the sexual uh, energy i was picking up on the five of wands but it's also about flirting with your creative ideas or flirting around with um the desires that you have for your future for your business if you're trying to start a business or um just certain uh What's the word I'm looking for? Not adventures, pursuits, certain pursuits that you've had or goals. Flirting around with these goals. It's like when they say flirt around with it, it's like entertain the idea. Um, entertain the idea of these things, kind of like daydream and imagine with it. But it also does talk about flirting, like legitimate flirting. So maybe you've been flirting with somebody or maybe you're going to start getting flirted with because, oh my gosh, the next one I didn't even like. Devotion. Do you see that? It's the uh, feminine and a masculine fairy sitting here and he's kneeling down below her and they're having a connection. So it's like a devotion of self and balancing your feminine and ma masculine energies, but also maybe um, it's about balancing out your connection and getting a fresh start with your connection um yeah for sure but i do want to, i'm going to just keep this out because i want to just uh sometimes the image doesn't really go with what the book says and so i like to look at the book to see if there's something on the card that maybe i'm not seeing unconditional love yeah a period of unconditional love of self which therefore and unconditional love for your divine counterpart, um, which therefore manifests in your reality because the two of cups there that I'm seeing that as well. And then the enjoyment and the flirting. So we got the flirting card, the sexual energy card, and then this devotion of unconditional love. So people will be coming back together, I think, for sure. And then we have the fire dance. This is again, I am getting very strong creative sexual energy. So it's like using, using your um, 
sexual energy t for manifestation because the womb space and the sacral chakra is a very creative force. The sacral and the throat, which I've been getting a lot of throat stuff, um, like just random coughing out of nowhere. Not every day, just like a random burst. It's not even like an itch or anything before that. It just goes, bah, and then it's over. So I feel like that's um, connected that's connected to this creativity, a new wave of creative flow, which I have actually decided to start a couple of projects myself that are kind of out of the ordinary for me that involved painting in different various forms. Fire energy, the dance of life. And it's talking about sexual energy. Are you effing kidding me? Bah, bah. Yes. Okay. Well, maybe some of y'all are about to get some really awesome sex lives. Congratulations, folks. <laughs> um, so, yeah. And then also dancing. Dancing is a way not only because it's fun and all of that, but it also connects you to the creator, to source. And you're most aligned to your authentic self in those moments. And it brings, it's a creative. When you're dancing, what are you doing? You're being creative. So yeah, a lot of sexual energy, a new cycle of creation and, um, and um, new connections. Okay. Alrighty, alrighty. So now we have the green fairy. And the green fairy, I'm pretty sure this one is about the heart chakra, which goes along with the unconditional love of devotion. And like I said, the heart chakra with the uh, chocolate brownie fairy and cacao. I get my cacao from Firefly Chocolate. They're ethically sourced. They literally work with, um, with the indigenous tribes that grow the cacao and have personal relationships with them. And... Um, they're, so they're 100% ethically sourced and they get fair pay. So I really do like that. Commercial cacao does not have the same love and, and energy placed in it. Like one of the tribes that I order that I, the, of the variety that I get, um, they grow them in the pine, the pine, the Mayan pyramids. And, um, they understand the the they understand the nature and the fabric of creation so therefore they they treat the cacao as as a being as a living being and nurture it so you have all of their beautiful intentions placed in this cultivated plant um when you get to harvest it so yeah the green fairy is about connecting with nature man y'all i'm serious you have to ground like you can't make excuses for it or you can but then you can't really complain about feeling like shit because you're not doing your job <laughs> and your job is just to get outside and take time for yourself get your feet in the dirt if you can get near water connect with animals or plants if it's if it's winter where you're at or not, not winter but it would be springtime i guess nobody's in winter right now but it is still really cold because one of my friends lives in canada and it's already been it's been hella cold there for them already but he also lives in northern quebec so n near the arctic circle or in the arctic circle um, but get outside, y'all, these, um, these activations get jammed up in these higher chakras if you're not grounding them to move them through your body. And this is about also connecting to abundance. I always say that your romantic relationships and your financial abundance are closely related. They're tied together because they both have to do with heart chakra and self-worth. So they're guiding us to get outside this week, connect to the abundance, work, really work on the heart space, unconditional love for yourself and for others. Um, and use this creative sexual energy. I mean, some, if you're in your union, um, this would be a great time to start working and practicing Tantra, which is not, was not made just to have some freaky sex. It was literally created to tap into that innate creative force which is the sexual energy and is for spiritual practices um, not for the sexual gratification out of it it was literally created for spirituality purposes of harnessing that kundalini sexual energy which by the way kundalini only um 
reaches the 10th dimension and there's 15. So I don't limit myself with Kundalini because it cuts you off from five dimensions. So why would you do that to yourself? Um, but most people don't know that. So they think Kundalini is like the highest form of energy that we can get and it's not. So yeah, get outside, get connected to your heart. And then we've got trespassers, but she looks like a spiritual warrior, badass fairy. Like, look how powerful she is. She's like, hell yeah. This is like powerful feminine energy. So let's see what the key word is for that one. Cause I'm not sure if I've ever pulled this card. Boundaries. Yes, okay. I'm just kind of skimming over this. Yeah, so so also um, even we've got to have boundaries with ourselves and with other people. So yeah, all this cool stuff's going to be happening, but they're also saying don't lose yourself in it. Don't lose sight of your goals. Don't get into that like honeymoon phase of you're like, oh, this is all so great and awesome. And you lose focus of all the momentum that you've been building. So have boundaries for yourself. Don't go just because you're in this unconditional loving state and you're having all this great, awesome spiritual sex. Um, they're just they're saying you need to have boundaries with this and you can't just go full force dive in. Otherwise, you're going to you're going to undo all of this work that you've been doing. And then we've got the shaman. There's um there's a deer in the background and the, again it's another green fairy and this is kind of like a green card. What's the keyword on this? I'm getting like this is more of like again like connecting with nature. Teacher. Take the next step in your spiritual development. And the, you may be getting new guides. Oh, we might be getting some new, new. When we get new soul contracts, that's not just with other humans. It's also with new guides. Um, like I had, I had started working with Pleiadians um, back in July. And that was a new soul contract for me. But now we're starting new soul contracts in this new cycle for the next three months. So since there's so many fairies in here, I'm going to say that a lot of you watching this are being guided to connect with your fairy guides. And honestly, last week I've been, I was like connecting really hard with my fairy aspect of self, just like hopping around like a little yard fairy. <laughs> so yeah, it's about, it's about, um, learning. Others may not seem as advanced as you are, but that too could be an illusion. Every person has their own path and timetable for personal growth. All paths lead to source. Source wants only the best for you and trust divine timing. So yeah, if you think that you're super woke, that's just another illusion to wake up from. We're all the same. We're all just on different. We're all just in different stages of this awakening process and it's ascension, but incension because it's in, it's inward, not up. It's through ourselves that we birth all of this. So let's see here. Do I want to pull some more cards? I feel like this is a pretty positive reading y'all. Um, yeah, we've shifted into this new timeline of stability and emotional fulfillment and all that unconditional love, creative, sexual energy, divine partnership, but they're also telling us, you know, we need to have good boundaries and spiritual boundaries, guys. There's so much false light out there masquerading as true light. You shouldn't really be working with any deities or beings outside of your own multidimensionality because remember, there's 15 dimensions and there's a version of you that exists in all of those. At least one. At least one of those. So you have at least 15 of yous. And if they're in these higher dimensions, guess what? That means they have higher knowledge and wisdom than your human self. So why would you use a being outside of yourself to tell you about yourself? 
why wouldn't you already tap into the ascended mastery that you already are into the angel that you already are into the the divine light being that you already are so i will tell you oh, okay this is a whole nother message so one of my friends has always been very awakened to spirituality um, with his third eye and he was thinking he was just having dreams and he would have sex with these beings in his dreams um but then he was also getting a lot of spiritual attacks they were succubus guys they were succubus and um i was like you really need to quit engaging with beings just because you run into them in your dreams you don't even know who the hell they are and they were totally taking advantage of him and he was using a lot of false light beings um to connect with and he was still getting spiritual attacks even like a week ago because he was still doing that but he's finally realized what he was doing and um so yeah look into false light look into false light beings and false light teachings because false light is designed to make you to to feel good and to build you up because they're actually siphoning your energy because you don't need to use anything outside of yourself now soul contracts with other people um are different like as far as healing and things like that you guys created this agreement before you incarnated to help one another on the physical plane and then you also do have guides um to work with but you need to use discernment and make sure that you're you know you're not giving your power away to another um being thinking oh wow i'm getting to work with this being i feel so special that they chose me why I, that's they chose you so they can manipulate you to feed off of you and your creative sexual energy and manipulate your um connection to your divine partner so use your discernment and set energetic boundaries setting your intention before you do any sort of spiritual practice it's it's like the most important thing that you can do if you're not connecting with your higher self first that's a problem because if you if you connect with another deity goddess or whatever before you call on your higher self they can actually prevent your higher self from protecting you so if you call on your higher self first and that me then they can actually stop these other beings from coming in to um siphon your energy and put these implants in you wow yeah so not just inner uh, boundaries with um people and yourself but in the spiritual realm it's a war on consciousness y'all and the false light has been designed to trick you into thinking that it's real and to thinking that it's actual true divine light nothing's all good all the time like that's the nature of existence the light and the dark and the balance right because if you look here it looks like fire and water but lightness and darkness and the balance maybe that's the thing that you're not seeing maybe it's time for you to cut uh to bring the death and cut ties with some beings that you have been working with that actually are not serving your highest good. So this is the one thing that he noticed when he started working with particular um particular beings that people always like to work with, especially when they first wake up, and I did I worked with them all for a while until I realized that they were actually causing problems and stifling a lot of my stuff my manifestations and relationships he noticed that that's when um these attacks really started to amp up was the night that he connected with these beings and started using them and using these these beings light use your own light you light is living light it is conscious of itself you don't need to use a lesser being to filter the light through there's no single person or being that keeps a light ray y'all they don't light rays are advanced they're liquid they are liquid light they are living light they have their their sovereign beings that have their own consciousness and they don't have a form so if you're using i'm going to just go ahead and say saint germain saint germain does not keep the violet ray the violet ray is the violet ray and they're a whole collective with 
that of themselves in and of themselves and he is actually um, a lesser being so he's actually dumbing down and filtering out there the actual true light which we all exist as pure consciousness and then we and d depending on the dimension in which harmonic universe is associated with we're in a different form so dimensions 13 14 and 15 are anti anti-matter meaning it's pure consciousness and then you have dimin uh, harmonic universe 4 which has dimensions um 10 11 and 12 and in those dimensions is when we're just pure light beings. So pure light comes from those dimensions. And, in, and then the next stair step down would be is where we kind of have a crystalline body, which is where those ascended masters would reside. So therefore, their light, that if you're filtering that through, you're actually losing some of it. But I hope you're getting this message. It's kind of convoluted, I know, and it's maybe hard to grasp and understand. But you already exist. Remember I said you already exist in these dimensions. So you t tap into that part of your multidimensionality. You don't need to use a, some, a being that's not you to call on this light. There's no being that keeps the light. You are the light. So tap in through your own higher self and your own multidimensionality to awaken and use the light that already exists within you. Does that make sense? Okay. So I'm going to leave the reading right here. Um, that was just a really strong message because this is, this is a very pivotal point in time. You can be, you can be doing all this work and still get stuck in the matrix, the false matrix. So learning discernment, but we all, we have this new, that, that was very specific for some people. That's not for everybody, but all in all. The hard part is over for now. We're getting an interlude of really awesome stuff that's happening. So thank you guys so much. If you're still here, I love you. Thank you for connecting with me and thank you for allowing me to be a piece of your journey. Have a very blessed day and namaste.